And here we have my uh, 3D printer. Uh, I received it last uh, week, and it was about mm, 300 parts, uh, maybe more, including all of the, uh, the screws. And I'm going to print something. In fact, what I'm going to print is a, um, uh, the hashtag for um, health information technology social media, uh, hashtag HITSM. Um, but first, let me just point out some of the pieces here. Uh, we've got a little engine uh, motor that is pulling some plastic down, and it's going to melt and come out and appear on this platform. Um, and I think the rest of it well, I'll describe while it's printing. So let me give it a start. So uh, first of all, we're homing. We can see there's actually a little bit of plastic it's already uh, been extruded. And uh, we're moving down to the front left, which is the home. And that's a little bit of old plastic. I'll pull that off of there. And the great thing about Google Glass is you can really get in there and take a look at stuff. And give it a moment. It's thinking. It usually does that. Um, has to make sure that the Extruder is at the right temperature. Now notice that what we're doing here is we're actually drawing a little border around the object that's going to be 3D printed. Now, the interesting thing to me is I wonder, is that just to show you where the drawing area is? Is it to kind of uh, exercise the extruder? Because sometimes the first couple of seconds it doesn't always work perfectly. Uh, but anyway, I'm just observing that. And as soon as it gets started here, I'll back off and look at the various bits and pieces. Okay. So we're starting to, uh, to, to, to draw the, uh, the object. All right, let's uh, take a look at the rest of this here. We've got this four motors. This motor right here is pushing this plastic through this is heating it up. The extruder is squirting it out. There's a little thermistor there to control the temperature. Um, this is a microcontroller board, uh, kind of like you know your, uh, your the Arduino uh, style uh, electronics. And we've got uh, three more in, uh, motors, one for each of the axes, uh, um, X, Y, and Z. So this is the this is the X axis. You see we're moving through here. Um, now we, we just move through the y-axis, and it goes through and it prints a layer and then it moves up one. Uh, that's the z-axis. Now the way it moves up is it spins this. There's a little motor down inside. I'll turn it around in a second. Now it's kind of sunny, so you can't really make it out, but it is printing um, uh, letters. You can see the little hashtag there, in fact, right there. Okay, And then there's a little bar there to connect them all. Uh, this is easier to see in the shade than it is in the sun. Uh, I've ordered some uh, uh, blue and gray uh, uh, PLA plastic. Um, okay, let's take a look here at the other pieces. Okay, we've got the, the microcontroller. We've got power coming in. This is how the uh, microcontroller is controlled itself by uh, a uh, 3D printer program on my Mac. Um, we notice that this is made of uh, plywood, very strong plywood. It's been laser cut. So you see all these pieces arrive separately and then you stick them together and we use the uh, zip lock uh, assembly technique, uh, which is kind of a neat uh, topic. Now look up here, there's a little, there's a little sort of a switch that when it, at the very beginning when it homed, it, it, it hit that switch. There's another switch just like it underneath here. Here we can see uh, a bit of uh, fishing line, and there's a pulley that is uh, run by the motor uh, that moves it back and forth on the x-axis. Uh, and we'll see that pulley for the y-axis when we flip this around. You notice we're getting some activity here. So, uh, so we've got the extruder, which is heating things up, and then there's a little fan right here. Uh, presume they work together. And we've got some bearings. And here is the pulley with the string wrapped around it that's controlling the movement in the, the Y direction. 
Okay, let's see. All right. Well, let's let's see how we're how we're how far we're getting here. Well, it's starting to make take shape, so you can see it a little bit better in the sunlight. Uh, we've got the the hashtag and H I T. Uh, I'm not sure what layer we'd be on right about now, uh, but we should be up. Uh, we're probably about 75% done. And now what happens is it lays out the external border, kind of a, a wall, and then it fills it in. And it does this over and over again. So it's really fascinating to watch. And let's get down there to really kind of take a look at what's happening. Yeah. It is actually quite mesmerizing. You can hear the sounds. Uh, when it does compound curves, it makes uh, it kind of warbles like a little animal. It's, it's, uh, my wife thinks that's kind of entertaining. Uh, we're almost there. And when we finish, I'll pop that off and show it to you. Now, I'll also show you a couple of other things a little more uh, ambitious uh, that I've, uh, I've printed. See, now we're filling in. We're at about, uh, about five minutes into the print. Um, I printed a, a, an owl. We have a snowy owl here in DC. They get hit by a bus. And I uh, printed a, a little statue about three inches, maybe two and a half inches tall. It took an hour and a half. This doesn't take nearly as long because it doesn't have the same amount of 3D volume. And like I said, it's kind of neat with Google Glass because you can really get down there and see what's going on. Yeah. Um, in here we have, as I was pointing out, that's the, the Y-axis motor. The, there's a motor back here that's controlling this rod. And then there's another motor that's moving this back and forth. Uh, they're quite sturdy, heavy little uh, devices. So, H-I-T-S-M, that little bar on the bottom I had to add so that all the letters would, uh, you know, uh, stick together. I, I could imagine making like a badge or something. Add a, uh, do it in different, do it in a color, put it on a different color background, add a little pin on the back. You hand them out at hymns. Well, we should be just about done. I could go over it. In fact, I will. It is... Uh, gosh. Well, we still have about four minutes left. Hmm. Not sure what to talk about. I could just pause the printing, but then I'd feel kind of silly. Uh, well... Anyway, we've got uh, a hit sim um, Friday noon conversation coming up. Kind of hoping I, I can get this done and offloaded and uploaded to YouTube in time to tweet it. Um, well, it's kind of nice looking, and and the, uh, the the white or translucent or clear I'm not sure what you'd call it uh, PLA plastic. It's 1.75. Uh, millimeters, that's what's fed in, that's what's melted. Uh, and it, it does give a kind of a sparkly, sparkly snow-like frosty icicle kind of uh, color, especially in the sun. Anyway, I've got lots of interest. Yeah, I can show you some of the other stuff I've, I've done. So, so there's, a, there's an H. That was uh, too big for what I intended to do. Uh, there is, there's the uh, Twitter logo, and like I said, when it does the compound curves, it warbles. And uh, there is the, uh, there's the snowy owl. Tweeted that out. Uh, there's a lot of interest locally in the well-being of this female snowy owl. It's about three and a half pounds. Uh, hit by a bus, a DC bus. Took a couple of hours for the uh, policeman to track it down. And, uh, you know, there's concerns. Uh, obviously, it's eating animals and rodents that may have uh, poison in them. 
Uh, it do really doesn't have much peripheral vision, so when it comes in to hit, to, to grab something, it doesn't really notice a, a bus coming in from the side. Oh, gosh, we must be within a minute or two of the finish of this. And like I said, it is kind of mesmerizing to see it's doing the outline. It's making the outline. And it's laying down a little bead of hot plastic. And now it's coloring inside the line, so to speak. Uh, and I think this is about 13 layers. Um, so you use a, some kind of a CAD CAM program, and there are many free ones available. I used OpenSCAD, uh, and um, grab up. I grabbed a program that allowed me to, uh, to uh, type some letters and turn them into 3D. And then I added a couple of lines to add that little bar at the bottom. Um, and then uh, you export it as an STL file, and then you import it into the 3D printer program. And then you position it and you scale it, so I made it smaller. So this is like one third size of what it would be default. And uh, then you generate the, uh, you, you run the slicer. It goes through the 3D shapes and turns them into layers. You can think about like igloos made out of layers to build a 3D structure. And uh, then that generates G code. And the G code is what's actually sent over to the microcontroller, which is then controlling all of the, the, uh, the X and the Y and the Z activity. And uh, surely we are close to the end, in which case I will pry it off of the uh, platform and show it off. Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm going to bring, I think I'm going to bring uh, this 3D printer to, uh, to HIMSS 14 in, uh, in Orlando. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it'd be a conversation starter. And I'm interested in seeing if anybody else is getting into this area. Uh, as it relates to workflow, it's, uh, there's a lot. So for example, uh, dental, uh, informatics, you know, from uh, molds of teeth being sent someplace to become retainers and aligners and uh, actual uh, uh, teeth uh, prosthetics. Uh, you could imagine this uh, dramatically improving the, the, the speed and the flexibility and the economics of doing that kind of thing. Um, uh, they have systems that are uh, uh, apparently most um, uh, Hearing aids are already 3D printed. Uh, it's great to be able to take a picture of uh, the end of a, a limb and generate the prosthetic leg or arm. Um, and, um, and folks are actually feeding living skin, uh, rather living uh, cells, into 3D printers and printing uh, organs. I, I put scare quotes around that, but uh, just tremendous medical applications. And maybe I'll print some... Uh, little medical uh, examples uh, to, to bring along. And I think I'm filling dead air here. We're at about 13 minutes on this video. Uh, Google Glass will do about 48 minutes on a fully charged um, battery. And it's HD, so uh, it's pretty good quality. I've been very happy with it. And we can see that it's really taking form. Now, if this was a little more colorful, I could imagine putting a little uh, pin on the back of this and just, you know, wearing it. Uh, yes, yeah, so this actually relates to wearable technology too. So if you have a, if you have a board, uh, and there are uh, Arduino compatible boards that are much smaller and low power. They have their own little battery built into them. Uh, you want to, uh, you'd want a housing. Uh, you could also imagine uh, medical device uh, manufacturers or well, prototyping. And so when you think, look at, think about all of the open source uh, hardware out there and the sensors of, of medical uh, significance uh, and then combining them together, prototyping them. And then uh, you, there's a whole kind of supply chain being created that ultimately leads from the, this sort of do-it-yourself style uh, prototyping uh, to uh, mass production. Ah, so it finished. So let's... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to raise the, uh, and take a look at what we've created. Ah, interesting. Okay, so uh, my bar is thicker than the lettering. So I may 
have to go back and to uh, redo that. And that's the whole point of prototypes. Oh, here we go. There we go. And, well, hey, look, well, he's got a little bit of a stand. So you can put that, you can uh, you imagine putting that on your desk. It's kind of little. And you notice, you see there's like little, little strands here. You kind of have to clean it up. And also, uh, you, you can control, just like when you have uh, drafts of, um, of a, that you print on a two-dimensional printer, and then versus the photographic quality, you can print on um, a higher resolution. So, uh, hey, let's kind of, I'm going to push this out of here. Put this uh, next to the uh, other things I've created so far. And, uh, so anyway, that's my, that's a tour of my uh, 3D printer using Google Glass. Hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to uh, seeing whoever sees this video in person to talk about 3D printing.